What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Professor Layton vs. Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. We are currently playing as Phoenix and Maya, and we are at the murder in uh the murder scene, or the house of the alchemist who was murdered three months ago by a witch. And this is the butler of the former alchemist who was brutally murdered. Okay. So let's speak with this guy. As I mentioned a moment ago, I know very little about this matter. As a matter of fact, it might be better to ask the Inquisitors. I can tell you about uh, one thing, though, namely what occurred before the incident. Before the incident? Yes, it was three months ago, around the time that Master Belduc was murdered. <gasps> cutting, 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 give we it to me. We were on our way back from collecting specimens for research, and it was already into the small hours of the morning. Ooh, okay, you're not, you don't have a kid's voice at all, it's kind of a... I mean, he is a butler. I was thinking butler voice, but I was like, what is a butler voice? There was a thunderstorm on the way, and as the storm drew nearer, we quickly made our way home. Oh, it's like a... That was cool! He reminds me of an older Robin. Robin, uh, the tactician from Anyone Fire Emblem Awakening. Saw, but Master Belduke, well, how can I put this? He reacted in a most peculiar way. Unlike others who saw it, he seemed unsettled, as if he was truly afraid of something. After that bell tower appeared, he changed completely. Master Belduc became a different man. Mm. Oh, um, wait a second. Did you just say a bell tower appeared? Hey, that explains it. That must be what High Inquisitor Darklaw meant when she mentioned an incident involving the bell tower. To this day, I do not know what the Master was so afraid of. I'm guessing the tower was originally burned down during the Great Fire, and that it sort of just, like, rebuilt itself. Do you think it was connected in some way to his death? I think it must have been magic. I mean, for a bell tower to just appear like that. Mr. Grey Earl, do you mind if we have a look around? I know that the Inquisitors have already carried out a full investigation, but... There just might be a clue or two with some kind of connection to the Great Witch. I suppose. Providing I am allowed to accompany you, of course. There is sensitive equipment everywhere, and it is my responsibility to take care of it. I understand. We'll be careful. I wonder how the Professor and Luke are doing with their uh, visit to the Storyteller. Yeah, I've been wondering about that too. A chance to meet Labyrinthia's creator. Let's just hope they don't upset the guy and have some terrible plot twist written about them. That only happened if it was you that visited the storyteller, Nick. The professor would never let anything like that happen. I've got a feeling they'll come back with some pretty useful leads. We have to do our best too, Nick. Let's keep up our side of the investigation. We're all in this together. Come on, let's see what we can find. That's the spirit. Boom, the tower, all right. Let's see, according to the Grail, Sir Del Bell Duke's butler, the bell tower appeared mysteriously after lightning struck one evening. For some reason, Sir Bell Duke became seriously agitated upon its appearance. Let's see, okay. The Great Witch Bazella will be tried in court? That will be Labyrinthia's final chapter. A fitting end for a town ruled by witches and their magic. Am I to believe that this final chapter has already begun? That is correct, and there is no way you can possibly change its final outcome. I wonder about that. You see, 
I gave my word to a young lady. I promised that without fail, I would be able to rescue her. If I'm not mistaken, the Great Witch Trial will begin in two weeks' time, the same day on which you will hold your next parade. I believe that should give us sufficient time to show you what we can do. Such a smug countenance, I find it intolerable. I beg your pardon? Two weeks from now, you say? I'm afraid that information is out of date, Herschel Layton. What do you mean? My parade will be held the day after tomorrow, according to the amended story. What? The day after tomorrow? That's not fair! Now that's the kind of countenance I want from the characters in my story. What? That's what I do, didn't you know? I decide the fate of characters who have no knowledge of their future. It would appear that you are not yet fully aware of the gravity of the situation. Let me see now. Just for fun, I'll write you a little story. A story full of surprises and a few tears. I shall enjoy seeing the motions, the emotions of the characters as they play their parts. A story for all! Stories are a fixture of this town. You should be, ah, uh, uh, you would be wise to embrace them. Let's see, I think we needed a stimulating incident. We shall have a witch, some witchcraft, and perhaps a little death. You can't! Oh, but I can! Let me see. This is a golden opportunity to use the alchemist's residence. How about this? Your comrade meets with death by golden curse in the alchemist's residence. Hmm. This could be a truly interesting story. No way! Feel free to act as you wish when playing your role in the story. How can you? The beginning of a new tragedy or farce. The victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. A man from afar falls to a golden curse and a woman from afar cries out in grief. The woman is captured, her dark trial begins. The fiery pit will cleanse all her sins. A man from before falls to a golden curse, and a woman from before cries out in grief! This must be referring to my own Mr. Wright! If we don't do something, Mr. Wright and Miss Fay will be in danger! There's no time to lose, Luke. Let's go and find them. Right you are, Professor! Hmm. The story has already been written. And no matter what you do, you will not change the result. I do not agree. What we do next can change the future in any number of ways. I'm sure that's what you want to believe. In fact, a naive outburst like that could be a poignant plot point. Please be my guest. Your words may help to raise the tension and bring a little excitement to my story. You monster! Luke, now is not the time. We need to help Mr. Wright and Maya. Okay, let's go, Professor! Better hurry! A friend's death added to items. Professor, do you hear her? Flapping sound coming this way! The sound of a large bird, perhaps. I got accepted into Hogwarts! That's the owl that we saw in the. Uh, <clears throat> Audience re It's a whole. Uh, dear lord, okay, hold on. Deep breath, deep breath, I'm gonna have a sip of my drink, and I'll be able to read things again. Ah, okay. Let's try this one more time. <clears throat> it's holding a letter in its mouth, not to mention watching us intently. Perhaps he wants to tell us something! I'll try talking to him to see what he wants! Hoo-hoo. What can we do for you? <laughs> I've got it, Professor! Hoot! That's the owl! Says the letter was delivered to the storyteller three months ago! 
to the storyteller. If that's so, then we can't very well keep it. After all, it's wrong to read letters addressed to someone else. That's what the house! <laughs> but it also said there's absolutely nothing written of the shades of parchment inside the envelope! Look, Professor! They're totally blank! A letter with nothing written on it. That is indeed most curious. And another thing, Professor! The owl says this letter was sent by the alchemist! What's that, my boy? Written by the alchemist. Do you remember what the storyteller wrote in that story he penned a moment ago? A victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. Which probably means the place at which this incident will occur. Is the home of the one who sent this letter! It appears the address of the sender, Sir Belduke, is written on the envelope. Which means... We had better make our way there immediately. Hoo hoo. Thanks, Mr. Hoop! The address on the envelope is somewhere near the town square. That's a little far from here, Professor! We might not make it in time! I think we'd better run! Luke, my boy, we have the need to rent a steed! Wow. They just said that. Can you believe that? I'm writing that. Can you believe that? They said he has the need to rent a steed. He said it. You heard him. Everyone heard it. I think you're right, Professor. That would be far quicker than running. Quickly, Luke. There's no time to lose. Easy, boy. This horse is certainly spirited. Luke, use the force and run. Say, Nick, have you noticed how the color of that wall is different from all the other walls in the room? I think I've investigated enough crime scenes by now to notice something as obvious as that, Maya. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but actually there was a small fire here a while ago. It was my fault. The wall ended up a little bit singed in the process. Now that you mentioned it, there are some signs of a fire on the floor here, too. There. Yes, that's correct. Anyway, I decided to paint the wall myself. Looks like Mr. Grail is way handier with his herbs than with the paintbrush. I let a candle set fire to some dry straw. In all my time as a butler, I've never made such a major blunder. It's not that bad. You're being a little hard on yourself. That's right, it's not so bad. You think that's bad? You should see Nick try to do the laundry. Now that's a major blunder. Okay, that was one time. Anyways. Let's go check out Mr. Belduke's study. While we're here, could you show us around your room a little, Mr. Grey Earl? Of course. If it will bring you any closer to finding the truth, be my guest. However, as the Knights of the Inquisition have ordered that the crime scene be left undisturbed, I must ask that you refrain from touching anything while you are in the study. Sure, we'll be careful. Hmm. Don't mind if I do. Peruse. Your room. Ooh. I swore he said don't come in here. Oh well. Look, Nick! They're on the floor. It's one of those. Whatchamacallits? You know, a uh, crop circle, right? That's an alchemist circle, Maya. We're not in the wheat field. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but please be sure not to touch anything. You heard him, Maya. That means keep your hands to yourself. No problem. I'll just do the touching with my eyes. With your eyes? Hmm. Very... Oh! I'm just stealing some coins, that's all. Oh. One more. Come on! There it is. Alright, let's take a look. Hmm. What's the matter, Mr. Grey Earl? Oh, it's, uh, 
Actually, it's that pendant. I must say, I find it fascinating. Oh, you mean this old thing? It's called a Magatama. Magatama? You could say it's kinda like my source of power, I guess. I understand. Stones are often charged with energy, after all. The pendant you're wearing is pretty neat, too. It's such a mysterious color. Oh, this? It's an amethyst. Master Belduke asked me to wear it. Wonder what happens if you take it off. Interesting. An amethyst. The amethyst brings about good vibrations in the in an alchemy. Uh, ha, 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 blah, blah. In an alchemy sense. Mr. Greyo? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just remembering Master Belduke. He gave me the stone and accepted me as his assistant, alchemist. But now, Master, such is the order of the natural world. Seems like Grey Earl really misses him. He must have really respected Sir Belduc. Okay, I guess I'll just keep going then. Wait, now I'm back in here? Hmm. Well, I think... Is that all the coins in this room? That might be. Whoa! Okay, I guess not. I guess there are more coins. Hmm. Oh, what? Ah, the fire marks, right. Oh! I got a little careless and failed to properly extinguish a fire. I painted the wall green so as to cover the discoloration caused by the fire. Oh, that's it? Oh, come on. Okay, let's try going- mm -hmm. Where to go? I guess I'll try going back to the crime scene. Or actually, can I leave? Hmm. Looks like I can actually go to other places, but... That's not right. Can I visit a... Hmm. I think I'm gonna head back, actually. This can't be right. Ah, I could, I, could, uh, I could read the story, though, to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Actually, I forgot to check the, uh... I forgot the, uh, check the coins for this place. Where? Come on. One more. Come on! Where? There's no time! Oh, there it is. Mr. Grey Earl, there's something I was hoping to ask you. What is it? This murder is the only unsolved case involving magic, is that right? Yes, that is correct. Is it really true that this crime would have been impossible without the use of witchcraft? That is the conclusion to which the knights and the High Inquisitor herself came. The crime took place behind a locked door, for one thing, which already leads to suspicions of witchcraft. Besides... Besides? The Master was loved by many people, and wasn't at all the type to make enemies. He was kind to everyone, not to mention sincere. It has always been an honor to serve him. I cannot believe that anyone other than a witch would want to harm him. Hey Nick, how do you think the culprit got into a sealed room anyway? Well, it was a witch, right? So I guess she used magic to get inside. I think we should stop calling the culprit a witch. How about magician? I'm not sure we need to be sweating over semantics. Hmm. Well, for now, I'm going to end the video here because it's it's been 20 minutes, so stay tuned for the next episode. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye!